almost nothing will improve the quality of your life like becoming more fit and healthy. In other words, the fit, healthy version of you is the better version of you. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how prioritizing your fitness can make you a better mom. These type of conversations sometimes make me make me uh, feel old. Feel uh, old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all dads. Yeah. Well, yeah. I you know the the truth is like this is um this is I, I think this way a lot now. I know we're talking about moms specifically, but I think this is parallel to being a dad. I think a lot of the, the same stuff we're going to cover today yeah. about uh you know about moms. I think it, it aligns with being a good dad yeah. and stuff like that and literally when I think about the biggest shift in my personal uh, journey in fitness, it, this has probably been it like to this type of way of thinking about health and fitness and working out. And when I approach my <coughs> workouts today, like these are the things like that we're going to talk about today. Or, these are the things that are kind of like marinating. Totally. And, and to be fair, um, you know, when I train clients and I'd love for you guys' opinion on this, I'm sure you guys saw the same thing. I would more often than not have to convince the moms to make time for themselves. Not necessarily the dads. It wasn't typically conversation, but I had a lot of clients that were moms where I had to have this conversation with them. And it was like, mm -hmm. because they sacrificed so much for the kids and their kids and, and they'd never made time for themselves. And so this was a conversation that we often had where it was like, no, no, you got to make time for yourself because this will actually, yeah. I know the most important thing in your life is your children, which is, is not a bad thing at all prioritizing some time for your fitness will improve upon that. The time you take away from your kids, that hour will actually give them back three hours worth of quality time because of all the benefits of fitness. Yeah. You got to fill your cup, you know, in order to be able to keep like pouring that into each one of your kids and being, you know, effective, uh, you know, you have to really take care of yourself. That's really hard. It's an easy thing to say. It's a really hard thing totally. to implement because it, you know, um, it's a noble, it's a noble thing when you think outside of yourself and you're really trying to help pour yourself into your family and, you know, build and develop, uh, the kids and, and put a lot of attention there. But, um, it's just, you, you notice it once, once you really build yourself back up, what kind of energy that brings life, uh, that brings back into the dynamic. Yeah. This was part of my sales pitch to my female clients, in particular, the, my, my moms, what I would, I would communicate exactly this because I knew that. I would need to point this out in order to get them to realize the change in behavior they needed to make in order to achieve these goals that they were telling me. And in part of that presentation, I would tell them, it's like, you know, I bet the last 10, 20, 30 years of life, it's looked like this, you know, your, your husband, your kids, you know, your family, work, the house. And it's like, and, and then, then you, at you the bottom, and then you. And there's a, so there's a reason why you're, you're not happy with where you're currently at. That's because you've been serving all these other people and making their lives better for so long. And that's it. That is noble. That is incredible. It's what's made you an incredible wife, mother, you know, partner, all these things. But you're now reached a place in your life where, you know, it's affecting your health or, you know, you need to make change and you need to do this. And what I'm going to tell you is that you need to put yourself here. But what I'm gonna, but what's great about that is all those things in your entire life that you've prioritized for so long are not gonna suffer. You're actually gonna be a better wife. You're gonna be a better mother. You're gonna be better around the house. But you have to first prioritize yourself and your health. And then those things are actually gonna fall right in suit and you're gonna you're actually gonna elevate all of them. But you need to first start with prioritizing yourself. Yeah, this reminds me of the, the best analogy I ever heard was from uh, one of my first mentors. And he was having a conversation like this with a, a member. And he said, you know, when you do the, you know, when you get an airplane and they tell you, here's the exits, do this, do that. And they say, when the oxygen masks come down, put one on yourself first Mm -hmm. and then put one on your child. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why they say that is because if you pass out, you're both dead. Yeah, you're, you're ineffective. Yeah. So you got to take care of you first so that you can take care of your kid. And I thought, what a great example of what we're talking about is you know taking care of yourself. Because think about this way, and I said this in the in the intro, but if you, if you compare a different version of yourself, a fit, mobile, healthy version of you versus one that's not as fit, not as healthy, not as mobile, which one is most likely to do a better job at all the things that are important to you, obviously the fit and healthy one. So uh, this makes everything else better. By the way, this is not this is not like a, a a second class way of looking at exercise. I know a lot of people look at exercise as a way to just make them look awesome or give me abs or whatever. The truth is, what I'm saying right now, using exercise as a way to improve the quality of your life, 
is actually the way you're supposed to look at exercise. And that is the sustainable way to look at exercise. That's the way, that's how you it's develop a, a relationship. In it. Yeah. That's how you develop a relationship with it where it's something you do for the rest of your life is to realize like if I do this right and I modify it based on how my life is, because we'll talk about this as well. If I do this right and apply it right, don't train too hard, train appropriately, do the right exercises. It's going to make everything else much better. And that's what exercise is. It's a tool to improve the quality of your life. Part of this challenge is that there's this massive misconception that my clients would all have that it they would that they had to sacrifice something from one of those categories. Because they will, I, I don't. I don't want, I'm not going to give up time with my kid. I'm not going to give up time with my yeah, husband. Yeah. I can't let things fall apart at the house. I got to make sure all our bills are like. They, and it's like, no, you don't. You don't understand. First of all, you're going to be better in those things. Second of all, it's not nearly as time demanding as everybody makes it sound like, or it's not like yeah. this this huge trade off. You literally could be in here. You could really dedicate two to three hours total in the whole week to your fitness and radically change your health. Especially if we pair that with with good balance and nutrition and diet and yeah. sleep and all these other things, like we could radically change your health with minimal amount of time and effort inside the gym or away from those things that you love so much. And a lot of the things when it comes to nutrition stuff, we incorporate with them. And so it's not like this big either or or oh something's got to give, and so I got to give up something so over here in order to to make myself fit and healthy. It's like. No, those things are all going to get enhanced. It's actually going to take a lot less commitment and effort than you think it's going to be. And it's only going to make all that stuff better when you actually get to be the healthier version. Right. Of you. So two hours of invested time doing this will get you back four or five hours of quality time, better productivity, et cetera. So the first thing to consider is that a fitness, when applied properly, improves your body's ability to deal with stress. Now, I think stress is one way to define, I don't think it's the only way, but it's one way to kind of describe what it's like to be a parent. It's very challenging, whether you have babies who are very demanding or toddlers or teenagers, for God's sakes, we know teenagers are, are stressful. Yeah. It, when you are fit and healthy, your body is more resilient to stress, which means you're going to react differently. You're going to yeah. be able to handle more problems as they come, as they hit you, inevitably as they hit you. So you're essentially toughening yourself up. I hate to use that word because that tends to invoke an image of the wrong kind of image, but it does make you more resistant, resilient, makes you stronger, both literally and figuratively, figuratively to handle more stress. And parents who have the, the best ability to handle stress tend to do the best job because raising kids is tough. Today's giveaway on YouTube is MAPS Starter. Uh, if you want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. This episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Viore, Viore Clothing. This is the best athleisure wear you'll find anywhere, and you can get yourself 20% off through our link. Go to vioreclothing.com forward slash mind pump. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. Also, this episode is for moms. We talk about how to prioritize your fitness to make you a better mother. We have four bundles that seem to be very popular with our female clients. We have the Fit Mom Bundle, the Bikini Bundle, the Fabulous 40 Bundle, and the Build Your Butt Bundle. Each one of them is two programs or more, so two workout programs or more. So it's it's a long block of planned workouts with demos, sets, reps. I mean, it tells you everything you need to follow the right workout. Each one of those, because of this episode, is 60% off. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. What are the physiological properties, Sal, that are that that are causing that? Is it because of the the fact that exercise is a physical stress of the body and your ability to deal with that and overcome that sort of and like adapt to that? Hormetic effect. Yeah. yeah, like what is what is happening physiologically with this that 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 like uh, the science behind why is it that me going in and lifting weights in a gym then makes me better to handle getting yelled at at work yeah. or yeah. dealing with a scary thing with home? Like what, what is well, there's it? A lot, there's a yeah. lot of factors. Physical and psychological. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. So there's a psychological part, which is when you feel stronger, you also feel, when you feel physically stronger, you also tend to feel mentally stronger. The, the data on more this is- More capable. More capable. The data on this is pretty clear, right? When you feel physically incapable- uh, mentally, you start to feel that way as well. You start to feel uh, more vulnerable uh, to stresses. Your body also reacts to blood sugar or insulin differently. So stress will, will, will cause blood sugar to rise. As you get stressed out, 
your liver will dump uh, sugar and you'll see a, a, a spike in it. Well, muscle is very insulin sensitive. And so your body reacts. When you get a big spike in blood sugar and then a drop, that makes you feel not so good, either anxious or wired or, or like you're going to fall asleep. Well, more muscle improves your body's ability to deal with it. You also get more androgen receptors uh, because muscles have a lot of androgen receptors. That's what testosterone attached to. And yes, women have testosterone. It's lower than men, but it's also very important. It's a key hormone in women as well. Testosterone is, they call it like a dopamine hormone, right? It makes you feel good, motivated, up, makes you kind of feel like, okay, I can, I can kind of handle things. Um, this is why signs of low testosterone in both men and women is like, low drive, low motivation, you know, I, I can't handle things, maybe low confidence. So it just overall makes you feel more resilient, both physiologically and psychologically. So those stressful situations happen and in energy, energy is another one. Like, you know, uh, think of a stressful situation. Your kid drops their cereal all over the floor. Yeah. Now imagine yourself exhausted and fatigued in that situation or energized and, you know, feeling good. Like, how are you going to react in either situation? You're more likely to react uh, with, you know, overwhelm in the fatigued state versus the the the, the strong. And, and yeah, and I state. think too. I mean, people discount like what your body's giving you as feedback and what creates uh, this sort of feedback in your in your own thought process of so anxiety or like hyper responsive. Uh, like, so it, so if I'm in an anxious state, like something seems a lot more jolting. Uh, to, for instance, versus if I'm like constantly training myself in physically demanding situations, you know, something uh, like that, like uh, something that drops or breaks, like I'm not going to be quite as, um, you know, aggressive in my response of like a, an alarming kind of a response. And I think too, like there's a lot of psychological benefits in terms of like just doing hard things. Like if I want to reduce it down to that, uh, you know. By I'm, the way, there's a big difference between doing hard things because you have to, or you feel like you willingly, have to. Yes. And doing hard things voluntarily. So when you go and exercise, and I know this as a, as a trainer, if a client got sent to me because their doctor told them they have to work out or their spouse said, you better go work out. It was a very different experience than somebody who voluntarily hired me. Yeah. It was always more challenging and it was they were far less likely to get positive long-term success. So exercising is voluntarily doing something hard and you're doing it appropriately, but you're voluntarily doing it. And that strengthens you. There's also, the, I think, like a very obvious, uh, you know, physiological difference of just building pure stamina, right? Like a lot of times uh, mm -hmm. something that causes a, you know, fatiguing, stressful day is, you know, as, as a mother or a father being at home, bending over, picking up toys and yeah. getting, you know, cleaning the you house, the getting, stamina to keep it going. Yeah. Just, and then you're just like, Oh, I'm wore out today. I had to pick up the kid and put him in the car and get him out of the car. And I had to chase him around here. And then I had to clean this and clean and like, and that can just be exhausting and fatiguing and just simply training the body to be more resilient to stress, physical stress like that, I, I would imagine that carryover into those daily activities lessens that blow. Like instead of it being something that's like, oh, I have to put my feet up, I'm not, I'm exhausted and I'm probably short tempered now because I'm exhausted. You have that ability to extend beyond that. Story. Totally, and you guys are talking about mood. Look, uh, the data on this is far reaching and clear. One of the most effective, if not the most effective, if you stretch this out over time, it becomes it clearly becomes the most effective uh, treatment for the common forms of anxiety and common common forms of depression is exercise. Exercise is exceptional at treating both those things. They compare them they, when they compare exercise against uh, enzyolytics or SSRIs or other types of medications. It does just as well in short studies, but over long studies, it actually starts to trend a little bit better. Why? Because there's no down receptor, you know, down regulation receptors. There's no side effects uh, that are negative like you might get with some of these medications or you build tolerances or you build maybe uh, addictions or whatever potential addictions. Um, when you exercise, it makes your mood better. And there's a lot of different explanations for this. We know the production of endorphins and catecholamines in the actual workout itself that make you feel better. But that doesn't explain the whole thing. Over time, you train, it's almost like you're training and priming the brain to view things and to receive things in a more positive uh, way. And again, this is consistent across the board to the point where if we could bottle this and put it in a pill, it would take the market by storm. Nothing would come close. Yeah, I, like I, I totally understand. I was going to ask you like how you would communicate the 
the long lasting, like I'm very familiar with what's happening from a hormonal uh, standpoint of the actual stress of the workout and how that has its positive, right? Yeah. I get, I get that you get that dump, that endorphin rush. And like that just in itself is positive, feel good. What is it about it that you know, 24 hours I still feel better or good about it. What is it that's happening? Is it just because I overcame something? Yes. And that's, that's that. And that's, that's cycle. part of it. Okay. Yeah. Cycle. That's part of it. And the other part of it is a healthier brain. So a healthier body. Oh, that makes sense yeah. Too. And so the brain is part of the body and sometimes we separate mm -hmm. the two. So we think, Oh, you know, brain, body, two separate things. No, no, no. Your brain is part of your body. And when we're talking about the hardware, right? So we're not talking about the mind and, and the consciousness. We're not going to go there, but we're talking about the actual physical brain. When your body's healthy, your brain is healthy. When your body's unhealthy, the brain is also not as healthy. A healthy brain is less inflamed, has better insulin sensitivity, utilizes glucose and energy better, thinks faster, is sharper, and is less likely, far less likely to be anxious and depressed. So now why am I saying this? Man, let me tell you, raising kids, if when you go from no kids to kids, and then you go from one kid to two kids, uh, first off, a woman's body, a lot of people don't know this. There's a difference between men and women with this, but a, a mother's body becomes primed for danger. First off, women in general yeah. are far more alert to danger than men are. And that's for obvious reasons, right? They're far more vulnerable than men. And they become very aware of that uh, as they grow up and through adolescence and teen years. They, so they become far more aware when women walk down the street, when they go to the store, when they do anything, they're just more aware of potential danger. Whereas men uh, in particular, you know, maybe not so much. So there's that. But then when they have a child, this is well documented, they become far more vigilant because they're caring for a baby. So sounds alert them. They they don't sleep as well. It think in fact uh, um you know uh, what are they called thoughts that, that sometimes mothers will have these 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 thoughts in their head for intrusive thoughts. Yeah. That becomes common among mothers or they'll think about all the different ways their baby could get hurt and they'll be distraught over it. This is because you're primed to look out for danger. And this can cause tremendous anxiety. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to deal with this, literally, it, the data shows this with any types of anxiety, but especially the, the common forms is exercise. And then depression, depression, you start to see a spike in depression uh, when, when people have kids, especially mothers. Why? You become isolated. It's very isolating to be up at night, you know, th throughout the night with the baby or to deal with your kids, especially if you're, if you're stay at home or even if you do both and you tend to take on more of the responsibilities at home, even though you work, that can be very difficult and challenging. So, uh, and, and you want to be a good mom. Well, being anxious and depressed can get in the way. Exercise, and I'm talking about appropriate exercise. I'm not talking about, you know, and we're and in no way, shape, or form, by the way, we're talking about working out like crazy. It's appropriately applied exercise, profound effects on, yeah. on I think that's the biggest misconception that, that you're going to probably hear us continue to say this entire time is that there is this idea that you got to really hammer the body. And uh -huh. I can, I can only imagine, okay. Cause I don't know what it's like to be, to have a child and to be that exhausted and to have someone depend on me 24 seven like that. And potentially also take care of all the other things you alluded to like that. And then to think, Oh man, I need to go to the gym and, you know, run on the treadmill yeah. and like crush it. Like that does not sound like something yeah. I want to do just not right now when I'm already taking this abuse and all these different angles, like that does not sound uh, appealing to me whatsoever. But if someone was to communicate to me that, listen, it's this, uh, the idea that it's supposed to compliment enhance your life. And it's like the, the, the training does not need to look like a punishment or look like you have to crush yourself or you shouldn't leave In the fact, gym. It, it shouldn't look like, yeah, that. you yeah. shouldn't leave the gym feeling ex more exhausted. You should feel, leave the gym feeling energized from it and feeling good afterwards. And that's the appropriate dose of, of exercise. Totally. The, the next thing about this is that, you know, you're taking time away for yourself, uh, for some sanity. Um, you know, it's nice when you make that schedule with your spouse or partner and you go, Hey, Mondays and Thursdays, I'd like to get away for an hour and go just work out. Like it's nice to be a, a away from everything and just exercise. There's a lot of benefit to that, by the way. There's a lot of benefit to doing that period without even adding the exercise. Oh yeah. Just but, checking in with yourself. You know? Right. Right. But just going off and exercising, take that time away. Uh, you know, that's, that, that's like a, a formula for, to improve your sanity. Well, yeah. I, I think of this as, and again, this is when it's programmed properly, it should be like a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, and a form of like becoming unbelievably present 
I mean, that's one of the most rewarding parts about going to a gym and exercise or going in your, in your garage if you have that space to yourself and being alone with just your headphones or even no music if you don't like listening to music and being alone with your body and the weights and feeling the movement and feeling the way, feeling your muscles get tighter yeah. and it contract and listening being, to good music being just, super yeah. present being and everything else melts away for that moment in time right all the things you got to handle and do and and I actually think there's something to be said about because let me tell you, the first time you do that, that stuff might not melt away. You might be sitting at your sitting at the on the bench, and you're going like, "Oh, I need to do this, and I need to do that." And really, part of this process is training yourself to be present, mm -hmm. is to let that kind of melt away. This thirty minutes to an hour right now is dedicated to myself, me, my workout, you're and just I'm stepping away for a second. Yeah, and I and I'm going to train myself to be here. Yep. and not there and that exercise in itself has got to be super powerful yeah. and rewarding and empowering for that mom who's got so much on her plate to be able to train her body and train her mind to be ultra, like super present when she knows she's got a million things on her well, plate well this has also been like a big sort of mission of ours to um you know educate people on the fact that like lifting weights this this is so moldable this is such like a uh, like, I don't think a lot of people think of lifting weights as being therapeutic or meditative. Right. Uh, and it's, it for sure can, you can have that experience if you uh, know how to adjust all of that and how to get in that kind of mindset and mind frame uh, and to be able to, you know, listen to your body as you're going through these movements and kind of tailor the intensity so it's beneficial. And again, this is all based upon whatever current environment and status you're in like this is mainly like the stress that we have to account for yeah. like if it's very high stress or it's very lack of sleep or it's very like all the factors that you're accounting for and, and taking inventory on um this is where now we're taking that information and we're applying the appropriate uh dose now into our workouts to benefit us so that way it strengthens us and helps us become resilient that's right it's pro self-care you are going away and doing something for you. And by the way, the reason why I'm saying pro self-care, because I do want to make a point here, because here's where things can go wrong. If you get away to work out because you hate your body, because you feel like you're not attractive, because you need to lose weight and I got to go beat myself up, this won't work. Mm -mm. This is not going to work. All you're doing is punishing yourself. That's not going to feel good. In fact, you're going to quit at some point or you'll punish yourself enough to the point where you make your health worse and you decrease your quality of life. You have to go to the gym or go in your garage or go exercise and say to yourself, this is pro self-care. Why am I caring for myself? Because I deserve to be cared for and because I care about these other people uh, that I have to care for. And so caring for me is important. So it's pro self-care. Approach it with that and your approach is more likely to be appropriate and less likely to be I inappropriate. I don't think you can stress that enough that this dictates the, um, the outcome from this. Uh, this is the difference of this being something that enhances all those things I said earlier, right? If you go into it because you're disgusted in yourself or you don't, you, I don't like the way I look, or I need to lose all this weight, or I miss what my body, if, if that's the way you're, you're talking to yourself, then the, the workout many times will reflect that. And the results from that workout will not give you the things that I'm promising you that You'll it'll become give worse. You. But if you go into it that yeah. I deserve to take care of myself, I love myself, therefore I'm doing these things because I deserve to be taken care of like that, and my workout should make me a better version of myself, should complement my lifestyle and all the other things I care about, that attitude, that framing of that uh, will dictate how beneficial it is for all these things we're talking about. And going into it with that wrong attitude can completely destroy all the benefits that you can get from it. That's right. Now, the key, and we keep saying this, is to train properly and appropriately. Okay. So first off, you probably have limited time anyway. So following a good program, something that's pre-written or created um, is very important, but there are things to consider when you're training properly. Properly doesn't just mean I do the right exercises and I do them right. And I do the right amount of weight, you know, weight and reps and all that stuff. That's part of it. But the other part of it is you have to consider a few things in order to make this work. And one of them is, uh, and this is a big one for parents is lack of sleep. The less sleep you get, the more the, the 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 less exercise you could do and get benefit from. In other words, if you're getting absolutely terrible sleep, you do very little exercise to gain benefit anymore, and you'll overcome 
your body's ability to, to, to handle the, the stress from the exercise. So consider that, right? So if right now you're getting zero sleep, your new mom, then you're probably not going to go to the gym and work out. Let's get that down a little bit first. Then as it starts to get better, then you can start to apply exercise in appropriate small doses and you'll start to see a benefit. If you throw a bunch of exercise at yourself all at once, if you're not working out and you all of a sudden go into this crazy workout and you're getting bad sleep on top of it, then things are going to go bad. You're Even though we good. have programs that mm -hmm. that scale people up, like like a starter type of program or something that eases somebody like a mom into this stuff. If I have a, a mom that I'm training and she's basically telling me that, like Adam, I'm just I have no I'm getting no sleep. Typically, what I do is like while we're we're, we're figuring that piece out, and because it's it's normally a period of time, right, yeah. where that can happen. Like it it does uh, it does happen. It's very common with a, especially with a new mother. And so uh, walking and getting outside in the yep. sun and stuff like that tends to be the only exactly. prescription yes. that I would say. And so it's like, okay, here I, I normally would have like programming laid out. Like this is what we're going to be doing, but I'm going to be checking in with you. If you're telling me that you, you're you not getting any sleep, this is how you're feeling, then your prescription for me exercise wise is go for a walk outside. Like that's right. What, that's what I want you to right. do. I want you to go outside. Because you have to think about the stress accumulation. And so exercise is a stress on the body. And the reason why you get stronger and more fit is your body uh, adapts to that stress. But if the total stress is too much for you to handle, then adding more stress or too much stress on the body is not going to not not only not help you, it's actually make things uh, go backwards. So like the example Adam said, you know, if you're like, okay, he said to go walk, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go do that Zumba class <laughs> or I'm going to go do Orange Theory. I'm going to go beat myself up type of deal. Besides them being bad workouts, it's a lot of stress and it's going to make you less healthy. It's going to take away from your ability to be a great mom, not add to uh, that ability. And, and the, one of the last things I want to say is when you're, it, it, this helps with stress, what I'm about to say it helps with stress, helps your body you know, handle uh, stress. Also has in, in some studies shows anti-anxiety effects because of its how it manages blood sugar. There seems to be some antidepressant effects to what I'm about to say in some populations, and it also makes the workout more effective. And that is to eat a high protein diet. High protein diet seems to be beneficial in most cases, but especially in a case like this where you maybe you know your stress is high or you're, you're you're trying to work out. Some anxiety is there. High protein breakfast, for example, has been shown to have benefits uh, for people with anxiety. High protein, uh, you know, uh, diet seems to have some positive effects uh, for depression, especially compared to other types of diets. So eat protein and aim for about a gram of protein per pound of target body weight. This is the the number one thing that I'm communicating nutritionally to this client, and this is one of those. This is the only thing I tend to communicate. Yeah, to this, client. this this is what is going to really make or break the results that we get from the work that we're putting in inside the gym or at your working out at home, whatever it is that we're doing, because it, it could quickly uh, determine whether your your results are slow or not happening at all or accelerated and coming on fast. Like if I'm struggling to get my client to hit daily requirements in protein and we're putting the work in the gym, many times their progress is stalled and we're not seeing the benefits yeah. as much for them. Maybe they're getting some of the psychological benefits from the working out and maybe a little bit of the the self, you know, the being present and things like that. So they're getting some of those benefits, but then they're not feeling like they're getting the physiological. I'm not feeling that much stronger. I'm not seeing change in my body. And a lot of that is tied to whether my client is is hitting those protein intake, the protein intake consistently day in and day out paired with our strength training because you got to remember that that part of it is the exercise part is just the stress you're you're just stressing the body you're just sending the signal to build if you don't give it the building blocks nutritionally and recover sleep do those things then you're not going to get the max benefits from that exercise this is also why i think we get in trouble with like doing lots of exercise and not hitting protein mm -hmm. take and people think it's so difficult well it's so difficult because you're stressing the body so crazy you're not feeding it properly you're spinning your wheels but if you are doing just enough, like which is two days a week of training or maybe three in the gym, stimulating it just enough, not overstressing, not training to failure, not crushing yourself in Zumba or Orange Theory type of class, you're just doing the proper dose of training paired with hitting your protein intake, the results will come on yeah. and then you'll see a huge difference. Yeah, especially you're not getting sleep. There's all this stress. I mean, you, this is a, a crucial element for recovery. 
uh, and, and to provide you with that uh, building block to to really like help prepare the body and, and keep you going and, and and give you results. Right, and some points with that is try to make it from whole natural foods. So we said one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. So whatever your target body weight is, eat that in grams of protein. Eat whole foods, try to get it from whole foods, not protein shakes and eat it first in your meals and watch what happens. This is like a huge diet hack across the board, but it contributes positively to almost any goal, whether it's to build muscle, burn body fat, improve blood sugar, whatever. Just what I said right there uh, makes a huge difference. Now we have, I believe, four workout program bundles. We have a, a mom bundle, a fit mom bundle, a bikini bundle. We have a fabulous 40s bundle and a build your butt bundle. These are the most popular bundles of workout programs that our, our female clients tend to get. And here's what we're doing with this episode. Because we're talking to moms, uh, we're, we've made all those bundles 60% off. So each of those bundles includes multiple workout programs. You follow one after the other. So you're going to have a nice chunk of time planned out for you with exercises, sets, reps. And then each program comes with demonstrations of the exercises that you could watch on your phone so you know you're doing the exercise right. Each one of those, the Fit Mom Bundle, the Bikini Bundle, the Fabulous 40s Bundle, and the Build Your Butt Bundle is 60% off. You can find those at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code MOM60 for that discount. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 